Hey YouTube, this is Doug Green Cabby, and today we're coming to you with our new swirl filter. We're going to show you a quick diagram and we're going to show you how you can put it together in five minutes, quick and easy. Now, I'm going to also give you some tips and tricks because we put uh, together a swirl filter prior to this and uh, we ran into a couple of problems and issues. We're going to go through those with you and uh, let you know what works, what doesn't, so that you can do it quick and easy and get your aquaponics to where you want it to be. So this is our swirl filter diagram. Uh, first of all, you're going to need a hole saw that's two and three eighths for your bulkhead fittings, which will be right here. All right, you're also gonna need a five gallon uh, water container uh, that is shaped like this. And you are also going to need a bucket. Now we did not put the bucket here, but basically the bucket goes here, like so, so that uh, your filter can rest on. Okay, so you're going to need a five gallon bucket. We got ours from Home Depot, but you can get yours anywhere you desire. And uh, so this is how it works. So over here is where your fish tank is, okay? And over here is where your sump tank is going to be. So uh, this is going to give you a constant height in your fish tank at all times. And uh, so what we're going to have is we have the fish tank with our pipe coming off. And what we learned is that you're going to want to have usually a foot uh, between where your outlet pipe is going and the top of your barrel. We had several problems with our uh, water overflowing because the water was coming in too quickly and it was not evacuating fast enough. So you want to make sure that you have anywhere from 10 inches to a foot uh, below where your outlet line is going to be. And uh, that is going to give you the ability to keep the water in your system and not kill your fish. We lost five fish because we had to continuously put water in there. And we were putting hose water, which has chlorine, and the fish were not too happy. So uh, what you're going to do is have at least 10 inches to 12 inches below where your outlet line is. You're going to have, uh, what we did is we ran one and a quarter. And what we found is that it is much better to have double the size of your outlet or your filter than you have coming in. So right now we have three quarters coming in uh, through our draining and we have one and a quarter going out so that we don't have a problem with overflowing. Because sometimes you'll have two drain valves and sometimes both of them are going at the same time and you want to make sure that it doesn't overflow. So we're going to have one and a quarter pipe going in and then you're going to have a one and a quarter male slip fitting okay a male to slip fitting so you see here's the male part and this is the slip fitting and it's going to just slip right into your um, inlet line you're going to then have a one and a quarter bulkhead and with the one and a quarter bulkhead you're going to use your two and three eighths hole saw to go ahead and cut through that now the tip and trick that we have to tell you is make sure and we'll show you later on why make sure that if you do one cut on here don't try to do another. As soon as you do one cut, uh, you're not going to be able to use your hole saw successfully again. And we, we tried all different kinds of things uh, to make it work and it did not. So we had to go out and actually buy a jug. We had a free one before. We actually had to go out and buy a jug to make this successfully work, which was not very fun. So you'll cut your hole here. And your inlet hole, you're always going to want it to be lower than your outlet hole. And then we're going to have another one and a quarter male slip fitting right here you're gonna have a piece of pipe uh, that is going to join a 90 degree one and a quarter elbow and the, this 90 degree elbow you're gonna have it facing downwards like so so that the swirl action can happen and all your particulates can go down and then you're gonna just do the same process on this side but have it maybe about an inch or two higher you're going to want to have this 90 degree elbow facing up and you're going to want to have at least an inch uh, below the top of your uh, barrel here so that it has the ability to fill up a little bit if need be. Alright, so then when we get down to the bottom of this, you're going to have a one and a half inch rubber coupling that's going to attach to your five gallon jug and it's also going to attach to your one and a quarter inch 90 degree elbow. Okay. So you're going to slip fit those two together. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have, remember, the five gallon jug. And uh, we'll have a one and a quarter inch to one inch reducer stuck into this elbow. And then we'll have a one inch pipe that runs out through the bucket. Now what we found that works to actually keep it in place is a one inch uniseal. We'll keep it nice and tight in place because when you're moving this um, 
the ball valve back and forth, it can definitely loosen it up. So we want to make sure that all of our fittings stay together and you don't have any kind of leakage. So we've got a uh, one inch pipe here that runs through the uniseal, through the outside of the bucket. And then we've got a ball valve, one inch ball valve uh, connected to another piece of pipe and then a 90 degree elbow that is also one inch. So we're going to go outside, we're going to show you this right now. We just wanted to give you the quick diagram. A lot of people have asked for diagrams when we build things. All right, so here's our aquaponics setup. Uh, as you see, we've got our plants growing on the top. This guy back here is actually a little start. We're trying to see if we can get it. We cut it off. He looks kind of droopy right now, but basically uh, this was the sucker off of our tomato plant over here in the self-watering container. And so we're going to see if we can get him started in the aquaponics. But once again, like I said, you have the drain valves that come off and they're growing in here. Now, as you see, I told you we had a problem with overflowing. So we took our one inch drain pipe and uh, we went ahead and took it into a three quarters. And so it drains in here. The water uh, runs down and it aerates the water. Uh, we've got our drain pipe coming here, which is the one and a quarter. And it runs out of the barrel. And then it goes into our bulkhead fitting, as you saw. Okay, we've got our connector here with our 90 degree elbow going down. And as you see, you know, it's filtering out a lot of waste there, which is really, really nice. Okay, and then we also have the 90 degree elbow facing up that goes into our sump tank, which is right here. And what it does is the clean water comes to the top and the dirty water cyclones down to the bottom. All right, then it runs down. Like I said, we have our bucket here. And then remember, we have the one and a half rubber connector that connects this to a one and a quarter 90 degree elbow that has a uh, one and a quarter to one inch reducer uh, that comes out to one inch pipe through the uniseal. We've got our ball valve. Okay, and then right here you can put your 90 degree elbow and if it was high enough you can put it down. But we actually run it up and we fill up big buckets with this. Alright, and then when it goes out, it comes into your sump tank and it constantly flows into your sump tank, giving constant aeration. Alright, now what we also made sure that we had was we made sure that we had a drain pipe and this is a one inch drain pipe. And this is what we installed when we were trying to make sure that uh, it didn't overflow. Because before we had the same exact setup down here, but it was three quarters of inch as opposed to one and a quarter. So uh, this is our swirl filter. It's working really, really great. Uh, we've got our water in here with our fish. We're gonna go ahead and feed them real quick, see if we can get them to come up to the top. But we got ten goldfish in here, and um, Let's see if they want some food this morning. Like I said, we got 10 in there. And they're swimming around happy as can be. Uh, like I said, we went ahead and put some more back in there because we did have some that perished on us. And uh, that's never a fun, happy day. But uh, we're loving the aquaponics. Gives us the opportunity to grow fish for food. Now we're not going to be growing uh, goldfish for food, uh, but this is just a system starter and then we're going to be getting some catfish in and uh, the catfish they usually grow about one pound per year. The reason we're not running tilapia is because in our state uh, you actually have to pay uh, $80 a year for a tropical fish license or an exotic fish license which is ridiculous. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do catfish which you don't have to have a license for and uh, we're gonna go ahead and see how those do. So once again, here's an update on our self-water container. We started this one at the same time as our other tomato plant in the aquaponics. But remember, this one here had a uh, dissolved fertilizer from last year because we used this one last year. And as you see, the tomatoes are getting really, really big. And we got a basil in there hiding so he can get some good shade and grow real good. And this basil is getting super tall as well. So tomatoes and basil love each other. So we've got probably about six tomatoes on here now. We got a lot of blooms, which is really nice. And uh, we're just gonna take it from there. 
So once again, thank you so much for watching our aquaponics adventure here on The Green Caddy. Uh, check out some of our other builds on thegreencaddy.com. And uh, make sure you give us a big thumbs up if you like aquaponics. Uh, please throw it on Google Plus and Facebook. And as always, please favorite, please like, please tweet, please pin. And make sure you're living a greener life so that we can live longer, live happier, and live healthier. We'll talk to you soon.